Thanks for tuning in to more Thoroughbred Horse Racing coverage on Prime Sports Network. It's the Playbook Sports Horse Report with John Hardoon and Mark Lawrence. How's everything going, guys? Good, good. How are you? Doing good. John, of course, is up in New York. Mark, you're in lovely South Florida. I'm in sunny South Florida right now, Greg. It's getting a little toasty here these days, but uh, we're not complaining, believe me. All right. Last week, John uh, came through with two wins out of two, so hopefully everybody was able to take advantage. Uh, what did you think about the races, how they unfolded last week, John? Well, it's nice when the plan comes to uh, fruition and uh, worked out. Both of them worked out well, and uh, actually they both won pretty easily, so... We were good last week. Let's see if we could keep it going for a and while. And we came, we came one one horse short of getting an exact in that one race because I almost hit the exact on a pretty good one. But I keep getting these almosts over the last few weeks. Yeah. I'm getting sick of the almosts. So hopefully, so do what I should yeah. Is. So we need to start hitting uh, a win on your on your behalf and a nice big fat exacta for me. Uh, all right, uh, Kentucky Derby is next week, guys. So. And, John, you're going to be in Las Vegas. How's that going to work? Are you going to be in Las Vegas when we do the show next Friday? I will be doing the show from Vegas. What are you doing in Vegas? I'm doing a seminar at the uh, South Point Hotel. When? Six o'clock next Friday night. Oh, it's on Friday night that you're doing the seminar. When are you arriving? I'm arriving Wednesday night at midnight. <laughs> oh, so you basically get one full day <laughs> I'm off. Having a I know what I'm having for breakfast and dinner. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Well, Thursday, you're all <laughs> Thursday's your day off in Vegas, and then that means we'll probably uh, record the show early on Friday. Perfect. Yeah, and so we're looking forward to that. Mark, as far as the standings are concerned, uh, we going to have all the race, all the horses that are supposed to be in the Derby, or did any of these horses back out yet? <laughs> Uh, we've had a few more back out here, Greg. Uh, in total, of the horses that originally qualified on the Derby Trail, 11 horses that qualified will not be running in the Derby this year. For whatever reason, uh, most recently, Concert Tour, Bob Baffert's horse, the horse we talked about and scratched our head and wondered why he ran in the Arkansas Derby, has scratched out. A big loss for Bob Baffert here. I think his hopes are going to re rely now on Medina Spirit. But nonetheless, 11 horses have scratched out. The 20th horse that's in right now at the moment is Get Her Number, a Peter Miller horse. And obviously, there's other horses stacked up waiting behind. It wouldn't surprise me at all between now and the Kentucky Derby to see one or two other horses scratch out of this race. How do you th uh, that, that's for sure. I agree with Mark. You're going to lose another couple of horses before Derby Day because that's just what happens. But. How do you think the odds are going to set right now, John? Are, are we going to have a, a heavy one heavy favorite? Are we going to have two or three favorites? What do you think? Uh, the favorite will be three or four to one, and it will be a, a, uh, essential quality, the uh, Brad Cox horse. And after that, it becomes a, a scramble. So essential quality will be the clear favorite. Yeah. So and and even three or four to one is not bad to tell you the truth for a favorite, even in the Derby sometimes. So. No, but it's a twenty horse field, yeah. and you know. Either way, then that means that you should be exact to pay out. Yeah. Let me ask you this, John. Uh, you're going to have an undefeated horse in there along with Essential Quality Rock Your World, who won the Santa Anita Derby, very lightly raced. Do you think that horse will command very much money, or will he be amongst the top three favorites? No, he's not going to. He's he, off the sheets. You're going to see. I think he ran a 10 when he won last time. He's three for three. You know, there was a whole big uh, story in California because the trainer took uh, the jockey off Umberto Rispoli, who won the Santa Anita Derby on him, and uh, everyone was flipped out. Well, he had an opportunity to get Joel Rosario, and they've had a lot of success in the past, and uh, he went out and he got Rosario. Not the nicest thing in the world to do, but that's the nature of the game. And there's very little loyalty left in this world. And uh, it even applies to horse racing. Where is that rider going? Uh, yeah, where, where is, uh, what happens to the horse that Rosario jumped, jumped off of? Uh, well, he was, know, on, uh, he, he was on concert tour. So once concert tour right. was scratched, uh, so like, Rosario got okay, the I see on, on the other horse. Where's right. that rider Where's going now? He's going for lunch at, in uh, California somewhere. Lunch? He's not leaving. He's not leaving the state. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. Why? 
There's a pandemic going on. That's why. <laughs> because he lost his one and only mount in the Derby. He only got to ride one horse. So he's like one of those riders? He's not like... He's a terrific rider. He's a, he came from Italy uh, about a year and a half ago or two years ago, and he's had nothing but success. But people are under the opinion that he's a turf rider. He's second leading rider in California. He's right behind Flavian Pratt, and uh, he's terrific. You know, I would never have made the change. I think it's bad karma. I think, uh, you know, it's just the wrong thing to do. Huh. But, again, they pay the bills. That's it. The, they own the horse. They get to make the choices. All right. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, if you like the video, please like it and make any comments that you like. You can ask John a question, Mark a question. You can ask me a question, even though Mark and I would have no idea why you want to ask us questions. But John will answer any question that you have. Just uh, post the uh, question in the comment section. And uh, don't forget, you can also take advantage of a $25 value. Basically, you're going to spend $25 to get one of John's cards of the day. So let's just say you like Belmont on Saturday. This is the first week back for Belmont. And John's card selections are $25. Go ahead. You pay $25. Well, John's going to go ahead and give you an additional Full card of selections for Saturday at any track you like. It's got to be Saturday, though, for free. $25, then you get the additional card for free. So uh, all you have to do is sign up, go to playbooksports.com. Where do you have that listed, Mark, at Playbook Sports? Uh, just click on the horse race report at playbooksports.com. You'll see a banner on that. Click on that. It'll explain all the details. The best buy in all of sports, a BOGO, buy one, get one from John Hardunia. Can't beat that, especially if you like the ponies like we do. All right, we've got two races today. It's the first time in a while that we do not have a graded stakes race. We do have one stakes race, though, and and uh, and, and, and uh, an optional claimer. That's going to be the first race. We have back-to-back -back seven and eight at Belmont. And uh, sometimes I like to pair these races up if we can, especially if there aren't any big-time races to handicap because you can – Throw in some doubles, and that just gives you a little bit of extra action. John will also have his free pick of the week coming up at Santa Anita Park. He'll make that pick after we talk about Belmont. Let's talk about Belmont, John, and that's race seven. Again, this is the optional claimer, and uh, out of the two races, John, I think this is the best one where you have a chance of hitting a good price. So this would be this. I would call this one the money race out of the two. Um, and there are in both races about four favorites, four heavy favorites. But I just think that this th this is a, a race that I just feel like there's a little bit more of an option that we might be able to hit someone outside the heavy favorites. I'm gonna my top play is gonna be a two six seven exacta, and out of the favorites, uh, uh, the two obviously uh, is gonna be one of them, and. That's going to be really the only heavy favor out of the bunch that I'm going to go with. So the one, the two, the four, those are the three heavy favorites. Talk a little bit about the differences uh, between those three horses, because when I see here, starting with the one, looking at bikinis, a two to one, uh, he's only had eight races in his career. Oh, uh, for three in the money since a career best three on the sheet mark. That was in October in a race in Keeneland. So that's that's an issue, isn't it? That uh, he hasn't really responded so much since that three. That was two years ago, and uh, that's a big problem for sure. Because listen, this horse at two to one, I want to play against him. He hasn't been out since last the end of November last year. Churchill Downs. Uh, he only ran twice last year, which is a negative sign. And the three that he ran two years ago obviously has hurt him because he's never come back and run close to it. So a two to one looking bikinis is not going to be on any, any tickets for me. That's for sure. Yeah. And keep in mind that his <laughs> last two races, he's been the heavy favorite in these types of races and he has not performed well at all. Uh, now the two is going to be one of the favorites. I'm going to go with John is a three to one shot. American power He's on a four race win streak. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about what you think about American power. Well, he's not going to be one of the favorites. He's going to be no less than the third choice because the one is two to one, the four is five to two. So they're both shorter than him, and he's fine. The race he ran two starts back was without Lasix. He went back on Lasix last time out and ran an eight. The question is, he really doesn't put races together. That's why I was a little bit negative on him because of that fact. 
you know, uh, whenever he runs a big number, like last year, he ran a six, bounced to the 10. When he ran the eight, he bounced to the 11. Well, now he ran an eight last time out. Can he repeat? Of course, he re could repeat the Barnes doing well, and he's three to one. That's a fair price. Um, but I wouldn't look for him to be making a forward move. The three, uh, this horse has never won at Belmont, 0 for 6. Uh, that's uh, obviously a problem for me. Uh, I, I talk about that before uh, in, in a lot of races. I just, uh, you know, sheet numbers, even sometimes it depends. If you're 0 for somewhere at a track, I just look at that as a negative. So what do you think about the three? Well, he's a little slower. Last year he ran a couple of eights. He's yet to come back to them. The good news is he's 6-1, to one, and that's probably the right price. If you think the race is going to go in a 9 or 10, well, then he figures. Uh, I think it's going to go in a little faster than that. Okay, the 4 is another one of the favorites at 5-2. to two. Uh, Went from Woodbine. A lot of races at Woodbine on turf. Changed over to uh, some dirt racing over his last three races. 13-9-9. And coming off a third at the Carter Handicap. That's a grade 1 race. What do you think about uh, the four, Super Stonehenge? The good news for him is that he's going back on Lasix. The nine that he ran in his last race is without Lasix, so that's a plus. The bad news is he's only five to two, and uh, he usually has a lot more time between races than he does between his last race and this race. So for that reason, at a short price, I would try to look to beat him. The five war. John, was his. Hey, uh, Greg, let me ask John real quick here. Was his last race his career best, the four horse? Well, he, ran, uh, he ran an eight last year, and his last two races were both nines. So, But uh, okay. the last two races, he had uh, about seven weeks between races or eight weeks between races, and now he's coming back on uh, just two weeks, or I should say almost three weeks. Again, if you look at, at his last. Six races, they all have plenty of time between races. This time he's doing something different, and he's older, and he's coming off of a, a big race for him. And he's never raced at Belmont. Right, right. and he's never run at Belmont, and he's uh, going to be the clear second choice, if not the favorite. So for those reasons, I would try to beat him. All right, the five is a 15-to-1 shot, War Tossin, and he gets an upgrade as far as the rider is concerned, so that's good. But this horse has one single-digit sheet number. That was an eight. Back in October of 2020. So I don't see why I would. Uh, this is not a long shot that makes sense to me. The only good thing about him is that I Rod Ortiz climbs aboard for some reason. And, you know, he doesn't ride many 15 to one shots. But off the sheets, the source has no chance. Now, this is the 15 to one shot I'm going to throw in in my exacta. Again, you get an upgrade just like the five as far as the rider concerned. And, you know, I look at this horse and there were a few reasons why I, I was, you know, because you look originally and you see, well, you got 29 and 50. It's like, this is just ugly. Um, but the last two races, he had a race on slop before that. OK, yeah, he had a really bad race, but it, it, something looks apparently went wrong there. And nothing wrong. Nothing went wrong. Go watch the replay. He was completely eliminated at the start. I remember because I bet him that eliminated. Day. What happened? He got to he jumped in the air when the gates opened up. He gave everybody a like a five length head start, and then he just wrapped them up. Okay. He, he knew he was out of the race. That's a non effort. That's a non event as far as I'm concerned. So really, you see eight twelve and the twenty nine last time out. By the way, was without Lasix and it was going long. It was a distance race. Cuts back today to seven furlongs. Goes back on Lasix. You know, not the worst idea at fifteen to one. Let's put it that way. All right, next up, the seven, another horse I'm putting into my exact at six to one, Wicked Trick. And uh, he, another horse that has had to deal with slop recently, two sloppy races, last three. What I like is uh, the last race that wasn't sloppy, ran a seven. He had a five, uh, January 2020. Coming off a win, he's two for two in seven furlong races. And his last three races on a fast dirt track, he's gone from a 10 to a nine to a seven. He's got four wins and eight on a fast dirt. Uh, this is this is the best bargain horse at six to one. I definitely uh, am going to play Wicked Trick. Yeah, this is my top selection in the race also for uh, some of the reasons you said. First of all, he has a seven, two starts back. The 11 last time out was on a wet track with no rest, so he figured to react. 
He's not the best horse in the race. However, tomorrow, he's probably the best bet in the race. Let's put it that way. There are horses that have run faster throughout their career. But this horse is the right horse at the right time. He's going to run a seven, maybe an eight. He's drawn well going seven furlongs. He draws an outside box, and that's where you want to be. And you're getting six to one. So for all those reasons, he becomes a play, and uh, I would just make a win and place bet on the seven wicked trick. And then also, uh, I'll probably put seven. Well, I will. I'll put seven and a double with a horse from the eighth race, too, and you might be able to get some decent uh, payout there. Anything, uh, any other of these long shots, uh, any of these uh, non-favorites or maybe a favorite that we don't like that you like, Mark? Well, I think this uh, seven horse checks all the boxes and for uh, value seekers, which is exactly what we are looking for value. I believe that horse is the horse to play in this race, as John said, at the top of his ticket. He's two for two at the distance. He's two for two with Eric Cancel on top of him. He's raced three times at Belmont. He's won one of those races here. I think it's a great value horse. All right. Let's talk about race eight at Belmont. This is, again, this is an opportunity where if you like one of these horses in race seven, go ahead and, and do a double, especially the seven that we all like uh, at six to one. Uh, the eighth race is a stakes race, elusive quality stakes. And as I mentioned before, this is uh, – this is a horse, a, a field where you got four favorites. I didn't really like any of the long shots in this one, Mark. You don't like no. any of the long shots in this race? Do you like any long race? shots in this one? Well, I'm going to look at the, at the seven horse, but I want to hear what John has to say. Uh, it's a Chad Brown horse. You've got three Chad Brown horses in this race. He's going to probably command a lot of money. I just wonder where the seven will fit in and sit yeah. here. He's really good at the distance. That's probably really the best one. The I distance. agree with Mark. That's probably the best of the long and shots. John, approach. what do you think? The best of the long shots, I think, is the five Olympic runner. Okay. But, uh, okay. you know, you're, just, you, you, you're picking at straws here. You, you know, we don't know who's going to be the longest of the longest. You know, they're both right. 12 to 1, the 5 and 7. Uh, very rare will you see Chad Brown go off at seven, uh, as a, a 12 to 1 shot. At, at 12 to 1, I should say. So I'm more likely to include be inclined that he'll be shorter than the five horse. That's why if you ask for a long shot horse that had a chance, I thought it was the five. Okay. And something, something to take note in this race. There are eight horses entered. Six of them are coming off of Lasix. The three and the seven are the only two horses that didn't run on Lasix last time and are not on Lasix today. All right. So as far as the favorites, uh, Best one that you're going to go with then, John, the four would be uh, the four and the six. The six, only two seven furlong races at Belmont, but those are his best two races. He ran a seven in both of the races. You know, you're talking about Chad Brown, one of his three horses in the field. Uh, so we can see why he's two to one. Makes a lot of sense. And the four has got six straight single digit sheet numbers. And he's at seven to two. Uh, and interesting is that the last time he had a long layoff was actually his best race. That's when he ran an eight at Belmont. Yeah. At Belmont. Exactly. That's why he was my top selection. You know, he's not the favorite. There are shorter priced horses. Um, and a, a lot of the field is coming off of layoffs. The ones coming off of a layoff, because remember they're back on the turf. And if you didn't go to Florida or to California for the winter, well, then you were on vacation, you know, so a lot of times people take this opportunity to rest their horses and bring them back for the summer meet okay. for Saratoga and Belmont and uh, and Del Mar and you know because those are the big races and if you take the winter off it's sometimes smart to do with turf horses and a lot of people do do it. Listen, let's be honest. You can make a case for the one, the three, the four, the five, the six, and even your seven. So it's not an easy race, but to me, the horse that's most likely to come out and run his number, and you're going to get some sort of value, would be the four, the therapist. All right, yeah, the one, interesting, you mentioned the fact that, you know, he had a layoff too, and that was also his best race. And it's also Chad Brown, but the, what I don't like about the one is he's now five years old. He, only, he had no races at two. He only ran three times as a three-year-old, three times as a four-year-old. So obviously, this is a horse who has physical problems. And as far as that seven, um, even though he's only got three wins out of 17 and one win and eight at Belmont, this is another Chad Brown horse. He's got Ortiz on him again. 
again, you're looking for a long shot. I just looked at this and agreed with Mark that I think if, if you're going to get a payout, maybe this is the way I would go. Any particular reason why you like this one, Mark? Well, what I like here is he was a beaten favorite in a grade three stakes race. His last race is a Chad Brown horse. He wouldn't have him in the race if he didn't feel he was ready. He's had one race at this distance. He finished fourth. He was only a length back, though, in finishing fourth. So it's not like he's going to a new distance for the first time here. And you've got Jose Ortiz up on him. Uh, he's been on him twice. He's won one of those two races here. I think there's good value to the seven horse. All right. So, uh, John, what's your pick again? I'm picking the, I'm betting the four to one therapist. Mark, are you just going to go with the seven or you got to go with the favorite with the seven? Well, if I'm going to play him, uh, I'm going to play him with the three horse. Uh, you got, I like the Mont Alvarado combination in this race here. His last six races have all been graded stakes races. He was in the Breeders' Cup mile. The problem is he's never been this distance and he's coming off a bull at work. So, if you get a price, I don't like the three to one price here. If uh, you know, if he ends up getting ignored in this situation, I'll be looking at him as a possible play with the horse as yeah, well. Yeah, what did you think about the three? Was it just the price that you just didn't like, John? Yeah, I mean, I thought he was similar to other horses, and he was a shorter price. So. Yeah, because he has a lot of single digit numbers over He's his career. Fine. Not, nothing wrong with him. Nothing wrong with the connections. I don't know if Alvarado's going to ride. He went down in a bad accident yesterday. He walked away, but uh, I'm sure he'll be. He took off today, so let's see if he's back tomorrow. Okay, he hasn't won in his last seven. That's another reason why it thinks that he's three to one, but we'll see. Uh, all right, so how about my freebie? Your free you want pick my free of the week is from Santa Anita, John. Race number four, a mile and an eighth on the turf, and I love the number four horse in here, Carmelita's Men. This is a four-year-old called from the Dean Pedersen barn, Abel Cedillo aboard to ride. He's listed at four to one on the morning line. He ran a big race, two starts back. He bounced last time out. He's been freshened up. Uh, look for him to run that big race today. I like number four, Kamalita's men, to win today's fourth race out at San Anita. Tomorrow's fourth race out at San Anita. All right. Sounds good, John. Appreciate it. Uh, enjoy your trip out to Las Vegas. We'll talk during the week, and uh, – We'll figure out what, when and uh, where we'll be. Sounds good. Doing we'll it. talk to you next All right. Friday. Stay Take safe. care. Mark, well, stay safe, my friend. Have a safe trip, John. Be care. Thank Take you. care, Greg. Take care. Bye-bye.